Hi, in this series of video activities, we'll be taking a look at one of the four definitions of abnormality that you need to know for psychopathology, which is on paper one. And this series will focus on statistical infrequency as a definition of abnormality, and we'll have a look at what that means and an example you can refer to in this first video. So what do we mean by statistical infrequency? Well, this definition of abnormality focuses on quantitative data and judging whether something is abnormal or not by how frequently we see it. So it is a mathematical way of identifying and explaining abnormal behaviour and any behaviour that is rare is assumed to be infrequent and therefore abnormal. Here is an example that will help to illustrate what we mean by rare. Official statistics claim that 1 in 100 people develop schizophrenia which equates to just 1% of the population. So here we can see that this mental health condition does not affect masses of the population. It is rare. And so this definition concludes that schizophrenia is therefore abnormal. Let's have a look at how the statistical and frequency definition of abnormality can be visualised. Now, you may recognise this type of graph as a normal distribution graph, but if not, then I'm sure you will do in the near future. You can see from this graph that there is a bell-shaped curve and that there is a peak in the middle and that both sides are symmetrical. This is because when we do any type of test that quantifies human behaviour, for example on intelligence, scores may fall in normal distribution with a clear and central average such as a mean score. So let's take a look at this in more detail. You can see from the line that has appeared on your screen right in the middle of the graph that this would be where our average score for intelligence falls. In this example, the average IQ of the population is around 100. So what we would be looking at to determine whether someone has rare or statistically infrequent IQ scores is how far their score falls either side of this average of 100. 68% of the population fall between one standard deviation of the mean, and in other words, 68% of people have an IQ score not too dissimilar from the average of 100. Now, if we take a look at a larger standard deviation from the mean, you can see that 95% of the general population have an IQ score that is two standard deviations from the average of 100. And this means that when you look at the IQ scores of the general population, most people fall within a similar set of scores, so most people fall within IQ scores of between 70 and 130, some lower than average and some higher than average. So at the moment, this graph doesn't tell us anything about rare IQ scores. So let's take a look at that now. Now, according to this definition, approximately 5% of the population have an IQ score that is more than two standard deviations away from the average of 100. For example, someone with an IQ of less than 70 would be statistically rare and someone with an IQ of more than 130 would also be statistically rare. In this case, anyone with an IQ score of less than 70 or more than 130 would be regarded by this definition as abnormal. All right, a quick thinking activity for you now, which you could do alone or you could work with a partner if someone's available. Have a read of the list below and think about where you would expect these people to fall on our normal distribution graph for IQ. Hopefully you or someone you're with will be familiar with some of the people on the list, but if not, then this would be a good time to look them up. You can pause this video for five minutes whilst you make your estimations and it would be a good idea to write your answers on your paper. Let's see how you got on with your estimations then. First, we asked about Albert Einstein, the very famous physicist who supposedly had an IQ of 160. So on your graph, he would be several standard deviations higher than the mean. And it's worth noting that anyone with an IQ of more than 130 is considered to be a genius. Next, we asked about Barack Obama former president of the USA, and he supposedly has an IQ of approximately 130. Someone with intellectual disability disorder would have an IQ of 70 or lower, with some having an IQ as low as 30. So this disorder would result in an IQ score that is several standard deviations lower than the average IQ of 100, making it very rare. Thomas Edison was next, 
and the famous inventor and first to invent things like the light bulb and motion picture cameras. Supposedly, he had an IQ of 145, so another person who's well above average for IQ. And then lastly, I asked you about Muhammad Ali, one of the most celebrated American boxers of all time. He supposedly had an IQ of approximately 78. Now, the one example that you may want to refer to in your work on statistical frequency is intellectual disability disorder. And that's because it's a specific disorder that you can refer to, which will also allow you to explain what exactly is meant by rare or statistically infrequent behaviour. OK, so here's another quick thinking activity for you. On your own or again with a partner of ones available, think about this question and jot your ideas on your paper. What behaviours might be statistically infrequent, yet still be desirable? Now would be a good time to pause this video for two minutes. Hopefully you were able to come up with some suggestions about behaviours that might be statistically infrequent, yet still desirable. Some examples you may have considered are on the screen. Firstly, people who are gifted with musical abilities such as Beethoven or Mozart may be considered rare, yet many people aspire to have their level of musicality. Scientific understanding, as we've already seen with Einstein and Edison, students all over the world study science and inventions trying to reach significant breakthroughs, yet those who achieve it will be considered rare by this definition of abnormality. In addition, people who can speak several languages could be regarded as rare and people who break world records may be considered statistically rare too. So to summarise, perhaps statistically infrequent behaviours are not always abnormal, but for this definition of abnormality, they certainly are.